Hi guys, I'm Ty Davis at Zip Tie Racing, and today I want to show you all the features of my damn good tire tool. Okay, and we're going to start off and we're going to go through step by step. I'm going to show you everything, all the detailed uh, stuff that we have here. First of all, when I designed this tire tool, I designed it to fit inside the hitch of your receiver of your vehicle and allows you to be able to adjust up and down for whatever height you want. Which really works cool is when it's in your hitch, your tailgate works as a bench. And so it comes out really handy. That's why the length is where it's at is for different lengths uh, tailgates. We also, <clears throat> when you buy the damn good tire tool, you'll get a stand so you can mount it on the floor, in the truck, and then this comes apart. It's all got the click, quick clevises. It comes apart and you can, it comes in a box and you can store it, ship it, whatever you like. It's also got two holes here for adjustability. And uh, they match up with these holes here, which will slide into here. And goes up and down depending on how high your truck is and how high you want, want this, to, this mechanism to sit. It also slides over this. And you can you run a quick pin through here and you can pin this and keep this from, from moving. The reason why I came up with this was I needed to build something that pushed the tire off. So that's when we came up with this mechanism here. So when the tire is mounted here, this will come down and push the tire off and I will show you that later on. Some of the key features that I built into this, which I'll show you later on also, is these little cutouts here to help hold your uh, tire iron when you um, slide when you're pushing down on the bead, you can slide your tire iron here. This little mechanism here will hold your uh, tire iron, kind of gives you a third hand. It has adjustability from 14 inch all the way to 21 inch. Most tire changers, well, all tire changers out there right now in the market are not that adjustable. And then once you get the, the size tire you have in the right position, then you lock it down. We put it left and right if you're left handed, right handed. Okay, another key feature is we have different axle sizes. Um, you basically slide it down and thread it in. Okay, the, the important part of this is you have to have the right size spacer for your wheel. I'm telling you, it's very critical because if you don't, your tire is going to wobble and this could be hitting your rim. So you've got to have this mounted sturdy and this will work just properly. But if this is not mounted sturdy, you'll have other issues trust me so we come in 26 22 20 and uh, 18 so you can slide slide over whatever one you want that will fit your your uh, wheel the best comes in two sizes one's a little bit smaller and for the smaller wheels too what also you'll get with your damn good tire tool is um, this this tool here is goes into these holes and also helps keep the tire from spinning. So if you if you want the tire to spin because it's mounted on your you keep your wheel spacers in your wheel, you can slide this in and out, you spin your wheel, slide this in and it locks it. This is also if you raise this up, as you can see if you raise this up, this will use as a push your rim lock back for your last bit of where you're putting your tire on. And it comes in handy. So it's, it does two things in one. So it has different size uh, different holes for different size rims. Okay, now that I've showed you a lot of the key elements of the damn good tire tool, now I'm gonna transition over and we're gonna show you how to change a moose on my damn good tire changer. Okay guys, here we are, we got a, a rear wheel. I'm gonna demonstrate on how to pull a moose off an 18 inch rear wheel. So first thing first, you're gonna slide this over the axle. Well, before we go there, I use like a number two uh, Phillips screwdriver and we put this hole on the end of it. And just you, all you want to do is just snug it up so it doesn't need to be too, super tight, just enough to not move. And I slide the tire on. The thing that uh, you're, you're going to do is you're going to see now we got this, the axle is way too small for the size of axle that's on this uh, Husqvarna. So what we're going to do is walk over here and grab one that fits since I know which one fits. I grabbed the 25 millimeter. We slide that right on in. Now that's made it nice and snug, right where we want it. Okay, another thing that I did is sprocket side up. You've been taught your whole life sprocket side down, but on this situation, and I'll show you why, you leave the sprocket 
side up. Okay, the second thing you're going to do, you're going to walk over. This is set up for a 21 inch wheel. We got an 18 inch wheel here. So we're going to pull this uh, clip out, pull the pin out, loosen the jam nut. We're going to slide it back to the 18 inch wheel, slide the pin in. Click it and then lock this down. It's kind of key to lock this down because you get a lot of play. You know, a little bit of play here ends up being a lot at the end, so that's why we added this feature is just kind of lock it down solid. So anyway, I like to start over here with the rim lock uh, on this side here. And uh, I go around and I like to push the tire down. Um, if it's been on a bike a long time, the, the bead gets really uh, stuck to the rim, so this allows it to, to kind of just Make it a little bit more pliable when you go to stick the tire irons in. Okay, so you push this down, take your tire iron, you slide it in, clip. There you go. You push it back, grab another tire iron, and click it. Pull it back. I usually go about three tire irons, it's about what, what I like to use. Okay, now we're going to go 180 degrees. Now we're going to come back over here, and as you push down on this, you're going to pull up on this. You don't really need the big tire irons, you can use whatever you feel comfortable. The reason why I said sprocket side up is you're going to slide and clip this underneath the sprocket. Okay, the disc is a lot smaller, and sometimes they don't go all the way hook underneath. And it, you want to keep pushing this down when you go to push the bead up. That way you don't break the bead. You can see the bead sucking in as we're doing this. Okay? All right. Come back here. Now you don't want to push down where the bead's already sucked in. You want to push down where the bead hasn't sucked in yet. Push it down. Oops, this one fell out, which a lot of times it does. Okay. Now we've got, a, we've got a section here, a patch about 12 inches. That's all you need. Now we're going to take the tire. We're going to flip it. Slide it back down. Okay, now you go to your section where you just pulled the bead up off the rim. And you're going to come in here. Now you're going to just push. Okay? Push it down. Okay, now it's all off the rim, or close to the rim. Bring it back over here to where the, the rim lock is. Make sure this is loosened all the way. A key element to making this thing come off really easy is you gotta make sure that this will, is loose. This is all loose, because when you put pressure onto the bead, you want this to be able to suck down inside the inner part of the rim. If it doesn't get sucked down, you'll never get the tire off. It's just it's the way physics is. You've got to get, one side has to give for the other to come off. So you want that nice and loose. You're going to come over here and then you can see it wanting to pull the, the bead off the rim. Okay. Sometimes you fight a little bit with it. It's okay. It's just, it's the way it is. And then you, you make a little, little, little push downs or and you just keep little, little bites as you go along and then and the whole thing will just start coming right off. And there you have it. Okay. Works great in pulling, uh, pulling the mooses okay, off. guys, now we're going to put the tire onto the rim. Okay, I put the disc side up for mounting. Um, it's a little bit, because that we're putting it on, the tire irons are going out, so you don't really need it to hook, hook under the, have anything for the tire irons to hook under. Okay, I like to put my rim lock somewhere off to the right, 90 degrees. I take my handy dandy tool and I shove it down inside. Okay, now it locks the wheel from turning. Okay, you got to make sure if you have any, if your tire is directional, this is the time to make sure it's on the right way. Go through your, your mind which way the wheel's turning. Trust me, it happens all the time, it gets put on the wrong way. Um, so what I do is I <coughs> take the rim lock, I'll hook it underneath the bottom of the bead shove it in there like so, put a little bit of tension on that, 
I'll come over here and I'll work it like a tire changer and I'll turn the tire around and around and you can see it's starting to slide or slide on at the same time I'm holding tension onto that so it doesn't pop back off you go about it can only go so far okay you hold it come back over to here and you start putting the bead on sometimes you might want to use a bigger tire iron on this it really depends on how stiff your tire is this is a Maxxis it's not that stiff okay another key element is after it's on you'll see that the moose is sticking up you got to get the moose all the way inside the rim in the, in the cutaway of the rim so we're pushing down and it's going to be a little booger and then you can use this to kind of help push it down you kind of spin it around okay that's about as far as it's going to want to go today okay so we can use we'll take the first stab at it stick it down here okay lock it in okay so when you're putting it when the putting the bead bead on you'll see that it wants to pop up okay there's no easy fix for that so what i've done as a trick is i'll i'll take a tire iron and i push this down okay now that holds it down put your leg on it and you can put a vice grip okay and that just keeps tension on it it keeps that thing from rolling up so it allows you to start pushing down the you can see it's starting to suck the bead in you back up a little bit it makes it easier to get the tire iron back in now we got half of it okay now the key feature is <clears throat> you see it's popping up that's a good thing <clears throat> remember this is one of our race wheels we want tension you know if this if this is completely flat your bead is basically laying on the rim your moose is probably nine times out of ten going to be too soft you want a little bit of tension here you want to see this this is a good thing um, you want to be able to f you, you basically want to fight it a little bit so and now you'll see why whoops you fight the tire irons okay now we're going to unhook this slide it back over to here we'll hook that down and push it down you can see it's starting to squish okay we're working our way up to the rim lock okay this is going on fairly good right now a lot of times that uh, you'll get to this point and it's super hard to get the rim the bead onto the rim so what sometimes you got to do if you have some help you have someone help you or you can unplug this and what really works good is that you can push this down and I'll see how the bead will get sucked in so when you put tension on this you can push this down and that'll help suck the bead in so you don't break the bead that's the number one thing guys have problems with so when you're getting closer it, it starts getting tighter and tighter and tighter okay so it's instead of breaking the the bead you can push this down okay now the bead is sucked in okay and you work work around it okay now you won't now you're guaranteed you're not going to break the bead you can see the bead being sucked in all and you don't have to another problem i have guys from the help of me you can see right here the bead sucked in you do not need to push it anymore it's done job done it's not going to get sucked in any further but right here 
you can see where the bead is sticking up. So run it back over to here where the bead's up and just push down on it. You see it go down? Okay. Now it makes this, your life, way easier at the end here. Remember, this is real life circumstance here. This is a race tire, race moose. We want it preloaded, we want it stiff. This is not no gummy tire, you know, gonna show you how easy on and off it is because in real life, you're not gonna be running one of those. Mostly you'd be running something like this. So this is uh, the, the real deal here. Okay, as you get closer to the rim lock, what I like to do is I'll set this up like so. Okay, now it's in there. You bring your tool over, stick it in there like so, push on the rim lock, pull this over, and pop it in. And then you give it a once, make sure it's all okay. And then pull, pull your uh, tire irons out. Okay, now, you got all this moose loops in here. Be careful, because sometimes you can have aluminum slivers. I've had it happen before. You stick your finger around here and you go around here and you grab a aluminum sliver underneath your fingernail. Just be careful. Come around here and you're gonna take all this moose lube, and all the excess, because it comes out, and you're just gonna reuse it. Throw it back into your tub and Use it for next time. Take your tire, we'll take your tire off, take it over to the hose, wash this all comes, wash all the moose lube off, and it'll be nice and clean. Another thing I want to point out to you guys, I just pulled the last tire iron out, and you'll notice all the way around the rim, the bead is out. That means you got good pressure. It's um, because if, if, if it's too much pressure, you'd see a lot more sweat coming off my face and, and a lot more tire irons flying around. But it was just enough perfect, perfect pressure where it pushed the bead out. Now sometimes the bead won't come out all the way. It's okay. It's not a problem. When you ride it, um, it'll pop right out. But if the bead is not out from here to here, you have a problem. Your moose is way too soft. You need to stiffen it up. So basically, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put it in, put your tire iron, pop it back off. Cut the moose, add some more moose to it, and do the process all over again. All right, and then when you pull it off, yep, yeah, that's probably that's probably around 15, 14, 15. And, that's, and like I said, that all depends on what tire you're using, because every manufacturer has a different size uh, carcass different sidewalls, different flex, all that's, you have to take all that in the variance of, you know, with moose and, t and tire size and all that. So basically, when it's all said and done is when you're gonna find out what real pressure you really do have. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that instruction, instructional video. Um, if you have any questions or, you know, have any issues, any problems, feel free to give us a call. You can call us at uh, Zip Tie Racing you can go to our website at ziptieracing.com or you can check us out on Facebook. And thanks again.